By the end of this presentation, you will learn what session tracking is and why we need it in web applications. HTTP, which is the key protocol for any web application, is stateless. Meaning, it doesn't hold the state between several different user interactions from the browser. If you have watched the movie Momento, or even the Indian Hindi version of it called Gajni, you, uh, you know what short-term memory loss is. Similarly, HTTP has short-term memory loss problems where the server, the web server, which is using the HTTP, doesn't remember what, uh, what the browser has sent it previously. So there is no state being maintained. The browser sends a request, the server responds back and it forgets about the browser. So we cannot maintain a shopping cart or whatever, that state information, uh, with the capability which is inbuilt in HTTP. So we have to do session tracking. The session is the time period between a user login and a user logout. Everything that happens between a user login and logout can be called a session or the first time the user enters our website till the time he leaves the website can also be called a session. It really depends on the kind of application we are developing. So to do session tracking, since HTTP is stateless, there are three ways to do it. You will learn those three ways in the next three session, next sessions, uh, which is cookies, hidden fields, and URL rewriting. But here, you will learn how to do it for Java E web applications. In Java E web applications, simply in your servlets or JSPs, if you say request.get session, the container is going to check. For the first time, when the request comes from the browser or when the user logs in, in your login servlet, if you add this line, the container is going to create a new session object in memory. Also, it's also going to create a unique J session ID and puts that J session ID as a key in a hash map or whatever, however it wants to represent it in memory. And then the value will be the object, session object which it created. Each of these session object are key value pairs. You can store any information into that uh, session object again. And from that point in time, when the response goes back from your login servlet, this J session ID is sent back to the browser in the response. And when the next request comes in, the, it's up to the browser to send that J session ID back. Because since we use URL rewriting cookies and uh, form hidden form fields, as we'll see, the browser will send that back, which we'll be seeing in detail in the next few presentations. But for now, when the first request comes in, we are going to do this here. It's going to create all this in memory and the unique session ID is sent back. When the second request comes in, now he's browsing through the home page, he's clicking on a particular link. The browser sends this J session ID which was created during login back. Now the container will, if you call request.get session in your home page servlet or even in your 50th JSP in your application, the server will not create a fresh session. It's going to check if the incoming request from the browser has a J session ID. If it does, it will, pull the corresponding session object from the map and then use it. So you can save your shopping cart information here or any other state information, user ID or you know any information you want to store into the session, you can store into that particular session. So if another user logs in, he will get his own uh, session and then a unique J session ID. So that's how uh, sessions are maintained in Java E web application. Simply by calling request.get session, you get it. The internals of it, what the web container does behind the scenes, the hidden fields, etc., you will be seeing it in the next few presentations.